So today's topic is Jumps Text Explorer platform, which you can find under Analyze Text Explorer. Well, we'll talk about the platform and ins and outs of it. But before we get to that, I mean, I'm assuming at this point, most of you are Jump users. I saw on the, on the poll, some of you are using version 17, older 18, 18 Pro. And so that means you're probably familiar that there are many tools built in Jump that are out there to help you to conduct statistical analysis or build predictive models. Under add-ins, there are some deep learning tools built in under the Tor Torch deep learning as well. But most of these tools require your data to have in a, some sort of numeric form so you can do analysis and build models with that. So today's topic is how to get text data into some sort of format that's available to use with most of the analy analysis tools built into Jump, whether you're fitting, <clears throat> fitting a model, looking at distributions, or building predictive models, or you know creating some sort of embeddings, those are all require you to have numeric data. So that's what we'll, we're going to cover today. Take the text data into a usable form for numeric analysis. There's some concepts that to get used to before we go into doing text and all text. And the main, main things to talk about here are words or phrases and sentences. Those are basically in our common language we talk about what's a word, what's a phrase. So word is one single word, phrase is made up of two or more words. And sentences are basically you know, describing a thought from one, from one period to the next period. And the corpus comes into play, what corpus is, is all the knowledge contained in that data file. So what most of our analysis are going to rely on the knowledge dependent on the, the, on the data file that we are opening and working with. So that will be our corpus. And in terms of tokenizing, stemming, and stuck words, those are, those are basically what do we do with these words or phrases? before we do analysis. And each of the word or phrase that we use, this will be clear when I, uh, when I open the platform and when I look at the terms and phrases, each of those words or phrases are tokenized, meaning that we create a token that describe a word or a phrase, and each of those will be counted as a new variable in your, in your data table. Stemming refers to when we're using words, are we going to treat, for example, swimming and swim and swimmer as the same word? Because the root of the word is again, swim. So stemming refers to how do we want to treat the words as they are just looking at the, you know, their root words, or we want to use also, we want to treat swimmer and swimming as different words on our different tokens in our analysis. And stop words refers to the type of words that are used do not necessarily change the meaning, but also, but to be used in everyday language, they're, all, they're always uh, existent in the text. And do we want to keep them as a part of our analysis or remove them? These words kind of like a and the, and those but, those type of words. And we'll, we'll talk about the, uh, using them in our, uh, in our analysis in a second. And finally, putting it all together, document term matrix is that each of the rows in a jump data table, actually, let me just open up a data table here so we can look at that. So if I go to my jump data table, so what we're referring to here is the whole data table is my corpus. And each of these rows referred as a document. So document term matrix is going to be, we're going to take each of these documents from that, we're going to take out the terms and then we're going to convert that into some numbers. And then this whole big data table is going to turn into a matrix. So we're going to save the results of the document term matrix, and then we can use that for our analysis. So that's just a quick overview of like the concepts that you'll hear throughout the presentation. And I just wanted to clarify that in the beginning. During the platform, we'll talk about how to use the terms, find most common words, the context, and then and what we can specify, how we can specify our own stop words and use these patterns to identify topics, do some term selection and sentiment analysis. These are all built in the text analytics platform. And what we're not going to cover is named entity recognition, 
summarization, natural language understanding, or large language models. So at this point, we're preparing our text for analysis. And what all these items are basically what you do with the text. So we're not going to be covering these topics in this presentation. But if anybody is interested in doing this type of work, jump ahead, especially in jump 18, we have built-in Python integration, and we can talk about that in detail as well. So let's talk about what the platform looks like. What we'll do is we'll go to Analyze, Text Explorer, and then we'll have to select a text column. In our data table, I have negative reviews and positive reviews. Let's stick, start with one of them. Let's start with the positive review. Put there as a text column. And once I have my text column, Jump will recognize that there's text in here. I can do some text analysis. If I were to put a numeric number, numeric column, it would stop me saying that I can't really work with that. So what's nice about this text explorer, it's available for a lot of different languages. So by, of course, my, my default is English because I'm in the United States. That's my display language, uh, what I'm using right now. But if you have documents in different languages, again, this will work seamlessly. The very first thing to decide when you're using this platform is how many words per phrase that you want to utilize. And if you've done this type of work in the past, whether you're using different programming languages, you will have to decide you want to use you know, two word phrases, three word phrases, four or five word phrases. But here in Jump, you can specify what's your maximum words per phrase so this will include all the way from one, two, three, and in this case, four, it's selected in my case as the default maximum words of phrase. And of course you can make this as long or as small as possible. And maximum number of phrases. So this is basically in, in this case, I'm saying I want to be, I'll be able to work with top 5,000 phrases, the top 5,000 most occurring phrases. And the most important one here is minimum characters per word. How many characters per word that you want to use to include in your analysis? I mean, by default, it's set to one. But in generally, when I did this type of work, I would set this to four so that I will, I will basically avoid most abbreviations. I will avoid the words like A and, and D and the and but those type of words as well. And again, maximum characters per word how long do I, how long of a word do I want to use on my analysis? The next two things to decide, do you want to do stemming in your analysis, which I described earlier, stemming referring to, do we want to use just the root words or we want to use a full word on our analysis? And for tokenizing by default, it uses basic regular expression, but of course you can either customize it or you can just stick to basic words. And this gives you an option to treat numbers as words as well. So once I set this up, all I have to do is click OK. And what this will do is in my first report, I get a list of all the words that are used, mostly used. So in this case, the word location showed up 372 times. The word phrase great location showed up 50 times, good location showed up 34 times. So you notice here is that I didn't have to specify two word phrases or three word phrases. They're all included. Even four word phrases are included on my list of phrases. 